In this video, we continue the demonstration of the use of JFLAP to build a finite state machine. Recall the simple problem that we had in the previous video. We accepted as input a string of A's, B's, and C's. It could begin with any number of A's, including none. That was to be followed by any number of B's, including none. And that was to be followed by an even number of C's. Thus, the structure was some number of A's followed by some number of B's and then an even number of C's. The picture that we obtained in the previous video was this. Notice we have four states. The starting state 1 represents having gotten either no input or having gotten only A's. As soon as we see our first B, we move into state 2. And if we continue to see B's, we stay in state 2. As soon as we see our first C, either from state 1 or from state 2, we move into state 3. That's the first C. And of course, that's an odd number of C's at that point. State C will represent having seen an odd number of C's in general. Thus, when we see our next C, or any C from an odd number of C's, we move into state 4, which is an even number of C's. From state 4, if we are to see another C, then we move back to state 3 and keep switching between the two as we process C's. State 1, state 2, and state 4 are all accepting. State 1 would correspond to having seen only A's, including no A's. State 2 would correspond to seeing some number of A's, including none, but at least one B. And state 4 would represent having seen some number of A's and B's, including none, but an even number of C's. State 3 is not accepting since it represents an odd number of C's. All right, now let's build this with JFLAP. I have placed on the screen the picture that we used to describe the finite state automaton. And now let's try to, uh, to build it with JFLAP. Here is our entry into JFLAP, and all I do is click on Finite Automaton. Move it over, give it a little bit more size, and stare at these four buttons right here. This circle button right here is the state creator. The one to the right creates the transition. The skull and crossbones will delete either a state or a transition if we have made a mistake. And sometimes we need to attach attributes to our states or our transitions, and we will use this arrow button to do that. So let's begin by giving ourselves four states. Click on state creator. One, two, three, four. Now the default names they have given to these states are Q0 through Q3. We're going to change those, but let's do that later. Let's begin by declaring state Q0 to be an initial state. So I clicked on that state. I will now click on initial and you see we get this arrow here which is the indicator for the start state. Now let's add some transitions. The first transition is from Q0 to Q0 with an A. In other words we're adding this transition right here. 
And to get that, we just click once on Q0. It asks us what text will control this, and we type in an A, hit Enter, and it gives us that transition. We also want to go from state 1, which is called Q0 right now, to state 2, which is called Q Q1, with a B. To get that, we just stretch the transition between Q0 and Q1. Again, it asks us for the text. We type in a B, enter, and it adds that. We can keep going here. We want to go from state 2 back to state 2 if we get another B. So we give a single click right here. It asks us the text. We type in B, enter. It gives us that one. Now we want to get some transitions to go down to Q2, in particular from Q0 to Q2. There it goes. We type a C, enter, and it puts it in. And we also want a similar one here. C, enter. We got that. Finally, we need to have some transitions between Q2 and Q3. That's fine. Here we go. Here's one. C will get us there. Now, when I go in the back direction, you may worry that this one's going to be on top of the other one. But you see that JFlap cleverly pushes those apart to give us some distance between the transition from Q2 to Q3 and back to from Q3 to Q2. All right, those are the transitions that we want. We have a couple other things to indicate. We want Q0, Q1, and Q3 to be final states. So we go to the Attribute button, right-click on Q0, and also click Final now, so it is both an initial and a final state. We right-click on Q1, Declare it also to be final. Q3 is final. And now let's change these names right here because these aren't terribly suggestive. We could change the names to 1, 2, 3, and 4, but that's not terribly suggestive. Let's call this one A's. Let's change this one to B's. This one, we set the name to Odd C's. And this one to Even C's. Now this is what our picture looks like. Again, we can use our attribute editor to click on our states. We could move them around, but I like this picture that's pretty much square. Now it's time to use the input capability to try to test our machine. So we're going to use step with closure right here and it says what some input that we'd like to try. So let's try first on something that we know is, should work. How about a couple A's, a B, and two C's. Okay. Notice it gives us the input right down here in this corner right here. At this point, we haven't read any characters, so we are in the initial state right here. And now let's start stepping through it. Step. Did you notice that the first character here in our input string A all of a sudden got a little bit lighter? All right. But we are still in this, and we step again. Notice the next one got fainter. Step again. That's still fainter. 
We are about to read the B at this point. We step to read the B, and yes, it takes us into our second state, the one that we've labeled here, Bs. All right, now we're about to read the first C. We should come down here. We hit step, and yes, it does take us to that. And now we hit step one more time. We're reading this final C, and it takes us over here. Notice the background here changed from the blue background it had to this green background indicating that that was accepting. So we are able to accept that string that we received right here. Think of green as standing for go. All right, let's try another one. Input step with closure and this time let's try exactly the same one except for only a single C instead of two C's. Okay. And we will just step right through that as we did before. Okay, now we're about to read this C right here. It will take us down here, but watch what happens. If we click again, it turns it to red, meaning it rejects it. And that's the case because remember, we're only supposed to accept strings with an even number of C's, all right? Let's try one that is very easy. How about nothing? This should be acceptable. We put it here and notice it's already marked green. So that was acceptable. How about having just, oh, four C's? So we start here. Now we're gonna start reading our C's. We step. It takes us down to odd number of C's, step again, back to even, step again, to odd, and finally we step again and we get back to the even state uh, for C's and the background is green. So we use this input step with closure testing mechanism to test our finite state machine on various inputs. All right. That's how you could easily use JFLAP to test out a design you might have for a finite state automaton.